All right, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to write some balanced equations for chemical reactions, but we're going to distinctly start different than we have in the past. If you'll notice these examples, I've given you a couple of reactants, but I don't tell you what the products are going to look like. Okay, and this is sort of the next phase in the progression to be able to predict what happens. And we're going to predict what happens without a lot of tools here other than what the reactants look like, and we kind of figure out, well, here's what we think they will do. So <clears throat> this one says magnesium plus nitrogen, and then we have the arrow. So I have two separate elements, and they're single pure elements. They're not compounds. They're not combined with anything else. I have pure magnesium metal and pure nitrogen gas. And if they were to react together, we have to figure out what they would make over here. So we have to look at this and be able to kind of compare to those five basic types of reactions and think to ourselves, what does this most look like? Like what format does it fit? And if we have two single elements, really the only thing those two single elements are capable of doing is combining together. Okay, there, there's no way they can switch places and make something different. It has to be a combination. So this is a synthesis reaction. And if we think it's a synthesis reaction, we need to write the words of the formula, the compound that's going to come out the other end. It's going to be the product. So if magnesium and nitrogen go together, it's going to make magnesium nitride. Now, keep in mind that IDE is the ending that tells us we now have a compound. These two things are combined together as opposed to be separate elements. Okay, now we have the words for what happened. We're going to try to turn it into formulas. We have our progression over here where we look for diatomics first. So we look at the single elements that are by themselves and see are any of those that are any of those the seven diatomics. Magnesium is a single element, but it's not one of those seven. It's not one of the seven diatomic elements. So I'm just going to write Mg. It's just the formula that we see on the periodic table. Then I look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is one of those diatomics. So when we find nitrogen by itself in nature, it's always N2, and usually it's in the form of a gas. Okay, now I'm going to put them together. But remember, these numbers, this 1 and 2, don't necessarily move over here. When they combine, they combine based on who wants to gain electrons and who wants to lose electrons and how many are going to get transferred. So I'm going to look on the periodic table and notice that magnesium is going to make a plus 2 charge. It's going to lose 2 electrons. Nitrogen wants to gain three. Those numbers don't equal zero. So these are going to have to go together into a ratio to make two nitrogens and three magnesiums. Okay, that ratio will give us magnesium nitride, which is neutral. There's basically just the right amount of electron atoms to give up and take the, the correct number of electrons. So I'm going to write Mg3N2. It's important to note these twos right here are not there for the same reason. This two is here because that's how we find nitrogen in nature. This two is here because of the charge that was on the magnesium ion. Okay, so they cut, they're both there, but they're not there from the same reason. Okay, now I gotta look at this and balance it. Looks like I've got two nitrogens on one side, two nitrogens on the other, but I have three magnesium atoms here, so I'm gonna need three magnesium atoms right there. A common misconception is people wanna put a little three right there. By putting a little three right there, we're saying those three magnesium atoms are combined chemically and bonded together into one molecule. That's not what we have here. We just have three times as many separate magnesium atoms that have to come together to make this compound. Okay, and that's a synthesis reaction. Now let's take a look at some other ones and try to recognize what goes on here. Here we have calcium plus silver nitrate. So I've got a single element and then I've got a compound. Okay, now if I start looking at those five types of reactions, what I notice is when there's a single element and there's a compound, typically what happens is this element tries to go in and replace something in that compound. This is going to be a single displacement or single replacement reaction. Calcium is going to try to go in and kick the silver out. One metal tries to replace the other one. And the reason is the metals always make positive ions and they're going to be attracted to this negative nitrate group. <coughs> so let's take a look at what that product would be if this reaction happened. Calcium is going to go in and replace silver, so now silver is by itself, and calcium is combined with the nitrate to make a new compound. So the first step is just to write the words that describe what's happening. Then we turn it into formulas. Once we've got the words for everything, we can work on this right here. We can work on that progression. So I look for diatomics. Well, 
Calcium and silver are the only single elements by themselves, and neither one of those is one of those seven diatomics. So all I have to do is write Ca and Ag. Okay, no, nothing special about those. They're just metals, single single atoms. Now I'm going to look at charges because these are compounds that have a metal in them. So I'm going to be looking for the correct formula, but this one deals with charges because I have a metal involved that's ion. So I have silver, I look it up and it's a plus one. That's on the back of your periodic table. Nitrate is also on the back, it's a minus one. This is a perfect combination. One to one ratio would give me exactly what's necessary. So I'm gonna write one silver and one nitrate. But remember, nitrate itself is NO3. I just have one of those groupings. And that's silver nitrate. And I'm gonna look over here and do the same thing, but I'm gonna make calcium nitrate with no regard to what this formula is, because this formula has no impact on what calcium nitrate is going to do. Calcium, on the front of your periodic table, makes a plus two charge. Nitrate is still a negative one. Those don't make zero, so I'm gonna need two nitrates to combine with one calcium. So I've got one calcium and two nitrates, Nitrate again is NO3. Notice the nitrate is still the nitrate. That didn't change. Just cha we just changed how many of them existed. And there's the correct equation. Now all I have to do is balance the amounts. I have to notice that there's two nitrates on this side. So I'm using two nitrates on that side. A lot of people will say, why can't I put a two just in front of the nitrate? And the answer is these are physically connected. They're one compound. They're one thing. So if I want twice as much nitrate, I need twice as much of everything because they're physically attached. I can't take bits and pieces, I gotta take the whole thing. And now that gives me two silvers, so I better put a two right there, and now it's balanced. Okay, and we got that just from having these two things and recognizing, hey, single element and a compound, I'm gonna have single displacement, it's gonna go in and kick something out. Now, looking at the red one, I got something that looks a little bit more complicated. But what I notice is I have an ionic compound here that has a metal, I have an ionic compound here that has a metal. So it's just like this up here, except here calcium was by itself, down here iron is with chloride, but it still kind of has the same feel. This is going to be double displacement, and the only difference between double displacement and single displacement is double displacement, everything has a partner. Single displacement, something gets left alone. But it's still the same sort of process, it's still the same sort of pattern. Iron is going to go in, kick the sodium out, and they're going to switch places. Okay, so on the other side, I'm going to get iron now with sulfate and sodium with chloride. And it doesn't matter what order I write those in, as long as I have those two separate compounds. So iron sulfate, and what kind of iron is it? It's iron 3. And then the other one's going to be sodium chloride. Notice we always write the metal first. Sodium chloride. Now I've got the pattern of what this is going to look like. I've got to go through the details. I've got to go through that progression. First I look for diatomics. I don't want to worry about that at all because everything is with something else. There's nothing by itself and that's the only time a diatomic element would, would matter is when it's alone. So I don't have to worry about that. But the next thing I get to is formulas and every one of these has charges I've got to worry about. There's no dyes and tries and tetras, but there are metals with non-metals so I've got to deal with charges. The nice part is, is it should all fit like a good puzzle at the end. Iron, three, that means it's a plus three. Chloride, I look up on the periodic table, it's a negative one, that's just chlorine. Those two do not make zero, so I'm gonna need three chlorines and one iron. So I write one iron and three chlorines. That part's done. Now I move to the next one, and I pay zero attention to this, I make the new compound based on the charges. Sodium is a plus one. Sulfate is a minus two. Okay, those don't make zero, so I'm gonna need two sodiums to combine with one sulfate to get a neutral compound. So I'm gonna write two sodiums and one sulfate. And remember, sulfate is a grouping, it's SO4. It'll always be SO4, that will never change. All right, that's my reactants. Now, a lot of people will say, hey, there's a Cl3, let's put a Cl3 over here. Do not do that. These split apart and then they recombine in a different way based on the new charges of the new combinations. And it's going to recombine in a way that maybe does not fit what you see on the other side. And that's okay. Iron sulfate. Let's go back to what you just looked up. Iron's a plus three, sulfate's a minus two. Plus three, minus two. I have a different combination now. So that means I'm going to need three sulfates 
and two irons. That's a complicated looking formula. I've got two irons, three sulfates, but remember sulfate is still SO4. That hasn't changed. That's what that grouping is. And then I've got sodium chloride. Sodium's a plus one, chloride's a minus one. Plus one, minus one. Those are a perfect combination. All I need is one of each. NaCl. Okay. But Mr. Throne, you got three sulfates over here, but you don't have a three right there. So we put a three there? No, that's not how sodium sulfate combines. That's not its formula. That's not what's naturally going to happen. Now I need to worry about the amounts. Now I'll take care of the fact that there's some things missing or too many of one thing on one side. So you have to pick one thing to take care of. Just pick one at a time. It doesn't matter which one it is. Let's look at the sulfate. There's three sulfates. Okay, I need three sulfates over here, so I'm going to put a three right there. Okay, now the sulfate is taken care of. Three sulfates, I got the same amount of sulfate. However, that also applies to the sodium. Now there's six sodiums. Oh, I'm going to need to put a six over here to balance the sodiums. Okay, now sodium is taken care of. But that six also applies to the chlorine. I got six chlorines on the right. I need six chlorines on the left. So if I multiply this by two, two times three gives me six. I have six of each. Okay, does it fit with iron? Two irons? Hey, this already had two irons. That is not an accident, that's chemistry. Okay, it should fit like a nice puzzle when you're done balancing it. If it doesn't, if it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger out of control and you can't get it to balance, you need to go back and take a look at these charges. Somewhere along the way, you've made a mistake on one of these little subscripts and it's affecting everything else. We don't have the correct formula somewhere, and sometimes you can't get the entire equation to balance because there's one inaccuracy. And that's just a progression you want to take when you're trying to predict the products of a reaction, and all you have is the first two reactants, and you don't really know what's going to happen. You have to start to recognize and look and see what type of reaction might it be.